Hey, how's it going guys? I hope you've been well. I promised this video about my rooftop tent falling off weeks back and just haven't had a chance to make it. This isn't clickbait. My rooftop tent did fall off. Here's a little video clip of when it happened. So, these racks broke entirely. The towers just snapped right off. So that's been fun. Here they are. Luckily my rooftop tent didn't go flying and I wasn't on the freeway or anything, but uh, yeah. These are rated at 300 pounds per bar, 600 pounds for the system, and it couldn't handle the 150 pound tent off-road, which that'll do it to some things. Luckily, I just recently installed the Prince rack. So we have the tent up there now. Uh, kind Jeep fellow pulled over and kind of helped me relocate that. So now we are rocking a rooftop tent, traditional. My rooftop tent nearly flew off, right? And it did, it nearly flew off. That's not even clickbait. Uh, I was kind of stressed out on the trail. So a little background, a little backup story. I went camping this weekend, had the rooftop tent over my bed cover. You've seen it in pictures, you've seen it in videos. I've been doing it for, for years. I like it, it's a little bit lower, keeps my center of gravity a little lower. It's not crazy wind noise when you're driving. I just, I liked it. I like the system over the bed. I have, I'm not gonna go into it much, but down back cover, all my stuff in here, nice and protected from the elements. Tent on top, sometimes a uh, Pelican case underneath or whatever. Anyways, that was my system, because I didn't have a roof rack for a while. I recently, luckily, fortunately, just got this Prince roof rack on top, which kind of saved the day. But anyways, historically, rooftop tent up here on this bar system. This bar system, this rack system, come with me. All right, so I have been using this heavy duty rack system. So these bars, each of these bars, each system is supposed to be able to carry 300 pounds dynamic load. That means two bars, theoretically, should be able to handle 600 pound dynamic, that's moving load. A rooftop tent is 150 pounds. So I thought if anything, this rack system would be overkill, but overkill is good, beefy is good, because off-road, you're shaking stuff around, you're bouncing around, you want it to be tough. Uh, and so I used this rack system successfully with the rooftop tent on top of these for only about five trips. So previously I had a similar rack system. The other rack system, these were made out of steel. That I used dozens of times, no problem. This was made out of aluminum. It gave me pause up front a little bit. I was like, oh, aluminum, uh, but it's rated at 300 pounds each, so 600 pounds, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, it wasn't. So I apologize to everyone who I showed this rack system just very recently. I apologize if you bought the system. If you're gonna use it on road, I have no doubt it would, it would hold up fine for you, but if you're gonna use it off road and you're gonna be bouncing around a lot, if your rack system was built like mine, it's gonna break on you. It's not gonna last. Um, and that's unfortunate because I really like this system. I'm also gonna reach out to this company, see what they have to say. Maybe they have a steel riser option. Maybe they've reinforced these brackets. Maybe they've changed something. Uh, so without throwing them under the bus, I don't even, I honestly don't even know the brand off the top of my head. I do know that I lost some of these. These just kind of pop in, but they're not super tight. I lost some, reached out to the company, they were great. They sent me, I mean, as a normal customer, I didn't say, oh, I got a YouTube channel, blah, blah. No, this is a normal customer because I just bought these as a normal customer. Reached out to them. They sent me replacements in the mail. They came same week. Uh, so the company, has taken care of their customers, no problem with the little thing that I ran into. But this is obviously a major thing. You can see here where it broke, it must've been scratching around and that's probably what I was hearing. Anyway, these broke. So luckily my rooftop tent didn't fly off onto the ground and destroy itself or fly off on the highway or destroy my truck in any way. It was really minor damage in, in the big scheme of things, I guess. 
But when it was happening, I heard noises. I heard weird noises and I thought it was my skid plates. So I, I was on the trail bumping around and kind of heard these creaking and weird noises that aren't normal. But it sounded like they were coming from my skid plates. And that's kind of, that happens for a lot of stuff. That's not just for roof, roof racks or anything like that. Tracking down noises on a vehicle is inherently kind of difficult. It sounds like it's coming from the front left and it's coming from, it's actually coming from the back right or something. So anyways, if you hear some weird noises, you might want to check your rack system, kind of just a PSA. And also it's good just to check your rack, rack system pretty frequently in general. And I do check my rack system before I go on any trip and kind of, you know, randomly, I, I'm looking at my truck a lot, like check, tweaking things and modding things and stuff like that. But there was no sign of damage but the trail was excessively bumpy and rocky and all that back and forth motion caused it to fail eventually. So this is more of a PSA for you guys that might have a similar rack system or the exact rack system since I put out a video on this truck bed a while back talking about everything, including a link to this rack system and talking about why I like it. I still do really like it, but it broke. So obviously that sucks. I reached out to them. They did upgrade the mounts. They made them beefier and added these little like kind of gusset things. I'll show a close up here in a second. And then I furthermore beef them up a little more. Very easy. So the mounts are aluminum and the bars are aluminum. So if you can, if you want to grind it down and aluminum weld some stuff on it, it's a little more tricky than uh, normal steel welding, obviously. Uh, I could have done something like that, but it would have been a lot of work. So instead I bought these brackets, steel brackets, and just bolted them on. And with the new beefier brackets in place, plus the little kind of gussets that I added, I think it'll be totally good. But I've gone on a handful of trips, nothing yet. Time will tell, but I think this will fix the problem. So here are the new brackets. I'll kind of show some close up of details. And this right here is my gusset. That is steel. It was just steel looking. I did coat it, primed it, and then painted it with this to kind of give a similar color texture to, to the other stuff. These are my old brackets all snapped. So if you can think, it's actually bent out quite a bit now. The old brackets were like this, constantly kind of going back and forth, eventually wore on this angle here, and they broke. Broke one at a time, and then our all four failed, which basically caused my rooftop tent to fall off. But it didn't fall off in the traditional sense because I have this, so it was just kind of boom, and then fell kind of onto this and no huge damage happened. So previously these old ones were a little bit thinner. They were completely smooth. As you can see here, no little mini gussets or anything. And the gussets that I'm going to show you, I don't know how much they'll help. Maybe a little bit, but they did tell me they made this a little thicker. It does look a little thicker. I did get a micrometer out to, <laughs> to make sure it was. Uh, and these ones are thicker than these. Not by a lot, but maybe enough. Furthermore, you can see there's two of these which are basically just look like dents. Here, it's in the shadow right now, here and here. Let's see if we can see them on the inside maybe. No, can't really see them. You can kind of see that little thing and you might be able to see it up here. In any case, kind of some gus gussets. Mounts are a little thicker. Maybe that would be enough to make this thing handle off-road use with a tent on top. Maybe not. I didn't want to risk it. So I did beef them up more. So I'll show you what they look like on the other side, basically. Uh, this one is scratched up a little bit but bolted to here, these bolts and nuts right here hold this, the bar, onto the mount. This one goes into the mount and that's what kind of secures the bracket in place. So these holes did almost line up perfectly with the mount, but not quite. I did have to drill this hole out a little bigger. The bolts are bigger than the native holes in this that it comes with. I will link to this and everything I'm talking about down below as well. And I did have to drill this one on the side because the, where I wanted to put this single hole, there wasn't any other hole available. As you can see here, we have these two holes 
here and here. Those are the ones that come with it, but I wanted one right in the middle. You could put two bolts on this side, but I thought one would be sufficient. So what this does is essentially prevent what broke my previous ones. So now this can't go back and forth and bend like this and bend and bend and over time just cause a stress factor here and cause it to fail. This will keep it more rigid and will allow it to not bend back and forth. I have taken this on trips and I do notice a lot less movement with my rooftop tent and rack system than I did before. So hopefully this is the fix you're looking for. These are very cheap. It does require some drilling. These are steel so it's a little bit difficult to drill through them if i mean if you have tools and work on stuff no problem i have a drill press i use that if you don't have a drill press just go slow with a metal bit use some clamps so you don't so you don't hurt yourself but yeah you'll you'll need to drill a couple holes and you'll need to make some of the holes that exist a little bigger now this is just a black uh bolt that I had lying around. Uh, it's a Phillips, I prefer to use actual <laughs> bolts. So I bought some black bolts to go here, uh, but you'll want that to be, you know, somewhat, somewhat rigid. So you will have to drill a hole through here, but that's totally fine because this area isn't the weak point. The weak points are here and potentially here, but this is a much bigger area. So mine didn't fail down here, they failed up here. I'm guessing this will be the weakest point by far. I think this will be okay. So I beefed up this, but also the thing is making this angle more rigid will mean that the whole thing doesn't want to go womp, 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 womp. So that means that will also decrease wear and tear on this angle as well, even though the bracket is only in this angle. The other thing is if you already do have these brackets with these little things in them, you have the new versions of the mounts. So if you don't have the new versions of the mounts, if you have the old versions of the mounts, the company will send you them out for free. I reached out to them and asked. I didn't say, hey, I have a YouTube channel or anything. I just, I bought these. I reached out to them as a normal customer. They took care of me. I also even lost some of these caps and they sent free ones out. So they, they took care of me just as a regular customer. So I commend them for that. And I do think the, this breakage was due to off-road use, but would I recommend these still? I would with this modification. I still really like the look of these racks. They are, you know, kind of overlandy and whatnot. I did do a whole video on this bed system. If you want more details, I kind of went deep, took a deep dive into everything. For those of you that do follow, some of you guys recommended I get these end caps to pop in here. I did get those. I'll link to them if you're if you're curious about those as well. But overall. Very happy with the setup now. You could, you know, drill more holes in this if you want to use it for like tie down points. These holes, like I mentioned before, do come from factory. Now I did tell you guys that I was going to show uh, my pulley system as well. And I'll go ahead and show the tent pulley system kind of as a bonus. But let me know if you guys have any questions with this stuff. Uh, again, if you have existing old mounts they will send you the new mounts for free uh, then you can upgrade unfortunately the whole pattern here is different than it was i like the older hole pattern better because it had these to allow for a little bit of wiggle room these i actually had to drill new holes because i already had these holes in here and they didn't line up with their old mounts i don't know why they did that but i did have to drill new holes through the foot portion of this as well but this is aluminum so it drills through really easy oh also so this is my new system i had an old system uh that was in my older videos it was similar to this but not as tall and the bars were rectangular steel the whole thing was steel the bars were steel this was steel that i think is much more rigid and safe so if you have my old rack system i think you're good to go if you have this new one and you have the new mount style you might be good to go but i might want to go ahead and beef it up with that if i were you so here is my pulley system and let me go ahead and show you it in motion all right so the pulley system i use is up in kind of this little this is my deck above me really up there and I put this roofing underneath so that way the water doesn't drip when I park under here. Uh, I usually park in my garage, but I added that, has some gutters. 
Anyway, so my install is different than most people. Most people put it in their garage or whatever. So these will typically screw in to your ceiling in your garage, or they recommend like putting a two by four or something. And then I kind of jerry-rigged the front. The pulleys rely on being attached to this. I didn't have really a good way to mount it because I didn't have any good stuff under there basically. So I used these like metal things to keep it from pulling because it wants to pull that way, as you'll see here. So here's the mechanism that pulls it all. And then I have that just a bunch of excess over here. So I just kind of have this system where I kind of roughly know how much I need to take off by how many wraps I wrapped it around this two by four. Basically it automatically locks when you just pull it straight down and to unlock it, you kind of have to let it go at an angle. So I'll do a little bit here so you can see. So this now is lowering the tent. And let me go ahead and put this on a tripod so maybe you can see the whole process a little better. And then now you can obviously see that the tent is lowered down onto the racks here. The system uses these straps. The straps go underneath the tent. So there's two of them that you just have to unclip. And then you're ready just to mount the brackets real quick to your crossbars and drive away. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's random video. If you found it helpful or informative or any of those things, take two seconds, hit that thumbs up button really, and comment down below. Get subscribed to the channel, turn on that notification icon if you haven't already. I make videos on Tacomas, guns, gear, adventure, travel, that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you want any specific videos on any kind of mods or anything, let me know down in the comments below or topical videos or advice or anything. I do have a lot of videos already on my channel about my truck. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. As always, thanks for watching and take care.